From Swiss Watch Expo, we've got the America's Cup Omega Seamaster Limited Edition. And whether you're a regatta fan or even a regatta racer yourself, I'll make the case for you that this might be the best Seamaster they've ever come out with. Fresh from the Showcase Swiss Watch Expo, we have the Omega America's Cup Limited Edition watch. This is my favorite Seamaster, I'll tell you. So I'll just give it away right now, right from the beginning. There's so many interesting things about this watch, and it's not just what you would use if you were a regatta racer. It, this is a, a lot of uh, things that they've come out with, that they've premiered on this watch, that really make it very practical for day-to-day -day use. And I'll show you what those are, but first, overall, it's a 44 millimeter watch. I mean, it, there's no getting around that. It is a big watch, but I don't have very big wrists and you can see uh, I could pull it off just fine. So don't let the size intimidate you. Uh, 44 millimeters is perfectly fine in today's uh, watch world. The thickness is 17 millimeters, so it does stick up a good bit, but it's absolutely comfortable to wear. So don't worry about that in the least. The basic architecture of the watch you do have a blue ceramic bezel, so of course it's not going to fade out or scratch. Um, the uh, chronograph pushers are red and blue, and they're sort of rubberized, so it gives you a, a really interesting tactile feel. Uh, I'm sure would be real easy to activate in a, a very wet environment, like if you were racing regattas. But uh, that picks up what we've got here. You can see with the box and everything, They've continued a red, white, and blue theme. Those are the official colors of the America's Cup. And so it's uh, a great color combination, always has been, looks great on watches and flags and everything else. So um, the color combo, either you're gonna love it or not, but uh, I, I, I put myself on love it. Um, you can see that the loom plots are pretty uniformly round, except for the two rectangular ones here at 12. Um, and then the, the semicircles that make way for the three o'clock subdial, they do glow blue, which is really beautiful. And then to help you differentiate in low light between the minute hand and everything else, the minute hand loom is green. So when you see it in low light, uh, it's very obvious which one's the minute hand and which one is the hour. I think that's a really great uh, use of the different colors of loom available to them over at Omega. The dial is the uh, zirconium dioxide. It's the ceramic that is laser cut with the wave pattern. So it's the standard, uh, what you see in all of the Seamaster Diver 300M watches now. Um, the, the hands are the, uh, the skeletonized uh, trapezoids that they, we've come to know and love. But the hands and the subdials are interesting. They're different. They're uh, new for this watch. The Omega says that they're inspired by the shape of a ship's hull. So we're keeping the regatta theme going. The um, big feature you see here on the nine o'clock side, it tells you real clearly on the side, it says chrono lock. So what that does is whether you're running the chronograph or not running the chronograph, if you move this down, then it makes it where the buttons can't be pushed. Now this could come in real handy if you're timing something as important as a regatta race and you've started the chronograph and you don't want you want to make sure that your time doesn't get accidentally bumped and interrupted so i could see that being useful to a lot of people you can lock it and unlock it just real easily there um, the countdown timer the way it works on this one you've probably seen a lot of other regatta countdown watches uh, this one you just start the chronograph and it has the flags from uh, zero to ten uh, of course you're going to get your uh, your horn and your flag signal on the regatta. Blake explained this to you on another video, but there's a, a horn and a flag at five minutes to let you know that the race is about to start. The reason this is important is because these boats are always in motion. They can't just stop them and throw down an anchor and wait for the start. So the start is usually a, a thin channel between two buoys. Um, they get a, a warning so that they can kind of time and jockey for position and and, and get their boat lined up so that they cross the start line exactly at the race start. So they get a, a, a flag at five, a flag at four minutes, uh, a warning at one, and then they try to cross the start line exactly at the, at the start. 
if they mess it up and they cross the start line before the, the, the official start, they would actually have to tack back around and do the start again. So they would lose some precious seconds. Or if they start too far back, then uh, they're going to lose some time that they might not be able to get back. So that start is, is really important. You see it here on the, the, the timer from, like I said, from zero to, to 10 minutes so that you can see the flags. Once it starts, then it just acts as a normal chronograph. But to keep things a little less busy and a little more simple, they've moved the hour indicator for the chronograph timer to an aperture at the bottom of the subdial. So that's really different. I like how it cleans everything up. Of course, you've got the date at six. Um, one of the great things about this watch, of course, we have the caliber 9900 movement, which is a vertical clutch, uh, coaxial escapement, Metis certified master chronometer movement. Uh, it's a um, double barrel with a power reserve of 60 hours. But you have a, a new quick change system for the bracelet. There's a button right here and you just push that button and you can slide the bracelet off. And then you can put on the blue rubber strap that's provided with the watch as well. Well, I'm having a hard time sliding it in there right now. Maybe I had too many cups of coffee this morning, but you can kind of see what that would look like. And the other thing that I really like about this, not only is the bracelet really robust, it's got the, um, the five link wide design, mostly matte, a little bit of high polish inserts, but we have of course the two button clasp release system. But look at this system for the micro adjustment on the bracelet. It says push real big right there. So guess what? You push that button and you, by just pushing that button, you can slide out as much or as little bracelet as you need. So it's extremely easy to use and you can change the size on the fly. That exhibition case back shows us the beautiful uh, Cotte de Genève and Arabesque decoration of the movement. And so between the, the tactile version of the rubberized pushers the chrono lock, the cleaned up version of what you would see here on your chronograph timer, um, the quick change release bracelet system. Those are the reasons why I think this might be the best Seamaster they've ever come out with. Plus you add to it the combination of the red, white, and blue. It does say Seamaster in red. You have an anodized red aluminum ring around the regatta timer and an anodized red second hand that has the actual America's Cup uh, in an outline on the counterweight. So it, it does have some really great America's Cup theming to it, but at the same time, this is probably the best Seamaster they've ever come out with. So uh, click the button to like and subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll be able to get notifications when we post new videos, which is uh, multiple times a week. And uh, give us a call here at Swiss Watch Expo. See if we've still got this watch in stock. It's unworn condition, pretty rare in the market today. There aren't very many of them out there. So um, I don't expect it'll last long.